So creating your own Google Map for a collaborative project is very easy to do. What you first need to do is navigate to the Google Maps page, that's maps.google.com. And once you're here, you want to make sure you're actually logged in with a Google account. So in the upper right hand corner, look to see that your Google information is there. If so, on the left, click on My Places. And at least at the moment, and I'm making this video in November of 2013, um, you'll see a big red create map button. This actually takes you to Maps Engine Lite, which is Google's new map generator. And it doesn't have all of the full features that you might want to use, whereas the, where it says right below, or create my classic maps, classic maps does. So you want to go ahead and click that link. And this is where you're going to make the map that you and your students are going to collaboratively create together. <clears throat> so let's say you're going to do an ancestor project. I'm going to give it a title. And then in the description, maybe give um, some information or some directions for your students. So uh, create your place mark by following the steps below. So maybe it'd be like step one, click on the place mark icon. Step two, add text. Step three, add a photo. You might need to be more detailed depending on the age of your student. So, but you want to go ahead and have your directions there. So what your students will do is they will actually um, come along and add place marks. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like here. So let's say I wanted to add a place mark in this particular location. All I did was went up and clicked on the place mark tool, which is that little push pin pointing down, and then went and moved my mouse and dropped it where I wanted it to be. And here I can give it a title. So let's say I want to call this hometown Joe Wood. And what students can do here is they can then click on this little icon and even change their icon to a different place mark. And then they have three different types of text they can add. They can add plain text, rich text, or HTML. You probably want to show your students how to do rich text because then they get the little tools that they might be comfortable with, like Microsoft Word. So they can then add some information. So this was my hometown. So you can have students add whatever pieces of information you want them to add. And then you can also have them add pictures. But when you click on the picture tool, it asks you to enter a web address. So that actually is a hint that the picture needs to be online someplace. So for example, you might have your students do a Creative Commons photo search. So let's say here's my Creative Commons search, and I want to find an image. And I'll put Sacramento. And so what this is going to do is bring up photos of Sacramento that are licensed for me to use. Slowly but surely, apparently. Oh, apparently didn't like what I typed in. So let me back up here. Um, let's see, I'm not really going to use this for commercial purposes, but I do want to modify or adapt. So let me now type search. Apparently it's not working this morning. So let me try something else. Let me go to the Google web. And I'm going to type and look for images of Sacramento that are labeled for use with modification. Perfect. So let's say I want to use this particular picture. I'm going to click on it. Go to view image. So then I'm at the place where I see the full URL for the picture that ends in .jpg. Or it could end in PNG as well, but a photo type. And then I click roughly where I want the picture. Let's say I want it there in front of the T and hit return a couple of times and then click on the picture tool and paste in a photo. And so now that the photo is there and my text is below it, I can click OK. I can click um, Save and then Done. And now if I want to see how this will look when it's displayed, if I click on the place mark, it gives me a little uh, graphic of the picture. So you can see it has my name, um, the title and then you know the, the photo and the text that I added. So that's just you know kind of example of how kids will come along and add place marks. What you will need to do though once this map is made and you have kind of your first place mark in it is you're going to need to link it to some place. So I might click on the link tool right here. Oh and I forgot a very important step. I need to make sure the map is collaborative. So before clicking on the link tool I need to click on collaborate and I want anyone to be able to edit this map. And so it's going to have a little check mark right there. And I'm going to hit OK. 
and now I'm going to click on the link. And this first link, you want to link to your website someplace. So I'm going to copy it. Let me open up uh, Google Sites here and find one of my websites. So let's see, this is my science teacher site. So I'll go put it on page A. So I might on this particular website page, maps project. To add your place mark to the map, simply click on this link and follow the steps below. And you might reiterate your directions here. And so the words this link I'm going to highlight, use the link tool, click web address and paste it in, and click save. So now what will happen is a student will come along, they'll click on this link. They may have to log in with their school Google account in the upper right hand corner, but once they are logged in they'll see the edit button. They can then click on edit, they can find the location where they want their place mark and drop it, and then add their information, whatever that might be. And same sort of thing, they would hit save, and then done, and then their place mark is there as well. The last cool thing that you can do is you can also embed the map. So just below where we got the link, there's the, it says paste HTML to embed in a website. So if I copy that, and I'm going to go ahead and go back to my website, Refresh this. So here is my maps project information. What I can do is maybe below the directions, I can actually go insert uh, map. And it's actually, if I go to my maps, it finds it for me. You don't even need to copy the embed code. I forgot because I'm using Google Sites. So I hit select, save, and then now. You, can, you also get sort of a display of the place marks as students add them, which is kind of a cool thing. But they need this link in order to get to a place where they can edit their map. All right, well, let me know if you have any questions.